Mm. It is the morning cryptos, and it is a rainy, rainy day, the 23rd of January. And I uh, got a nice email from a friend of mine, a personal friend of mine, who uh, has been kind of watching these morning cryptos, and he had some really good questions. And I thought they would be worth answering here in the program, so I'm going to do that. But first, let's start the music. So we're going to just check in here. Obviously, Bitcoin is continuing to slide. And uh, that's there's so much there's so much opinion out there in the world, and it contradicts itself. Uh, so it's hard to know what to do. And if you're new to the space, it can be mind-blowingly overwhelming. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. But first, I want to just check in with the news. I have not checked the news. I'm going to hit refresh here, Bitcoin news. Uh, if currency crash plunge would harm its investors, but not the economy, USA Today. See, what I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of little hints of governments wanting to regulate cryptocurrency to protect their uh, citizens and to uh, protect the economy from a crash. So when this economy, which is built on a house of cards called central banking, falls, they're going to blame cryptos. You just wait. Just wait. You're going to see it. <laughs> That's my opinion. Uh, uh, NASDAQ investigating Bitcoin futures that are different to rivals, CEO says. Okay, whatever. Uh, HYCM adds Ripple and Bitcoin cash trading to roster. Okay, whatever HYCM is. Um, okay, not seeing a whole lot of FUD here. Let's quick type in Bitcoin price and see if there's something different. Bear grip strengthens as Bitcoin price nears 10,000. Bitcoin slides more than 10% to $10,000 level. Bitcoin price latest cryptocurrency plunges as traders in South Korea are forced to, I guess, identify themselves. Okay, so interesting stuff. Now, what can we do about that? Nothing, right? What's, what's reality? What are we looking at? We're looking at Bitcoin sliding, right? And the others are doing it pretty much as well. Bitcoin Cash down, Bitcoin Gold. I still like I still like the chart on Bitcoin Gold. I mean, it just does not want to go down much farther than 180 bucks, you know. Uh, Dash looking sweetly down right now i'm starting to see you know we are looking at some opportunities here right eos down but certainly not very much so eos is really hanging really holding um ethereum is quite a bit down uh iota quite a bit down litecoin down neo down this is just my group that i kind of these are my bellwethers, the ones I watch, kind of check in all day, and then, you know, they're all down. Just down, 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 down. All right. Zcash, really down. Cool. All right. So, I want to just go to uh, my friend's questions. Mark, thanks again for posting all those videos and openly sharing your process with it all. And by the way, that's what I'm doing. I am openly sharing my process. I am in no way giving financial advice, but I'm going to answer my friend's questions since he asked them. I could probably ask at least 20 questions, but I'll limit to these few. Are you currently still enthused about or and or believing in the potential of cryptocurrency trading? Yes, I am more and more enthused and believing in the potential. Right now, I'm just I am learning. My learning curve is I got in basically on February 7th was my first purchase of Bitcoin, and we we're in a kind of a similar pattern in that the price was not really, really low, but it wasn't moving. And I just started buying $20 whenever I could do it, which was almost every day, because in my mind, I felt like, okay, 
20 bucks. If I lose 20 bucks, I lose 20 bucks. Uh, you know, I spend 20 bucks on stuff that I don't need all the time, right? So what if I took that 20 bucks and stopped wasting it on, I don't know, I, I canceled some memberships I had and some websites and I just, I stopped going to porn websites, you know, stuff like that. Uh, got my 20 bucks and I started putting it into, first I started just buying Bitcoin because I didn't know anything about anything else. And Bitcoin was what I'd watch documentaries about. And I highly recommend you do watch some documentaries about Bitcoin. Um, and so, yes, I'm still enthusiastic about it. However, we are, we've had a turn. We had a huge bull market run up and now we're having a bit of a correction. Uh, and no one knows when the correction will turn around and start going up again. However, his next question, if I were to start with my first $100 or two today, or more likely tomorrow, would today or tomorrow be a good day to start, or should I wait for a more opportune moment? Okay, this is really important. Uh, last night before I went to bed, I, I watched that email, and I was like, well, what would I do? And going back to Bitcoin here, I bought 100 bucks worth of Bitcoin at Coinbase. You know, uh, and I think... You would be okay if you bought a little bit every day as it goes down. Don't don't put all of your money in today because it may still go down farther. But if you, we call it laddering in your orders. You can, on a daily or a weekly basis, start buying small amounts so that when it does move, you are in. Uh, and... You know, you have to decide how much you're going to put in. I bought 100 bucks worth of Bitcoin. Boom, last night. With cash. From my checking account. In Coinbase, right? I didn't use any of the other cryptos that I have invested in because they're down right now. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to play long-term hodler on those. But in the meantime, if there's any other bargains that I want to snap up, I've got to put fresh money in at this, at this moment. Um, because I'm playing with house money over in my trading accounts at this point, And even though I've lost a significant amount of their value, um, I'm still way ahead from when I just started what I call dollar cost averaging. Now there's different definitions of that, but for me, dollar cost averaging is just buying on a consistent basis, small amounts, whenever you have a down day, whenever you have a red day. Right, So that would be my advice is today's a red day. Get yourself a little Bitcoin. And I would start with Bitcoin at Coinbase. And then I would get some Ethereum. And then I would get some Litecoin. And yes, I would also get some Bitcoin Cash. So for you guys who are just beginning, you're going to be fine at Coinbase. right? Even though you don't hold your own keys, that's a whole other issue we can get to later. To start your money is as safe at Coinbase as it is in any bank in the United States. And I'm not saying that it's safe. All I'm saying is it's pretty safe there, right? Uh, and you can easily, that's your gateway. That's your entrance into fiat, in, uh, from fiat into crypto and from crypto into fiat, right? Uh, my strategy at this point is the next time I have some significant profits, I'm going to build up my U.S. dollar wallet at Coinbase so that I can uh, take advantage of price drops. And that's a new part of my strategy. However, if you're coming in new, fresh today, good news. We're having a correction and you're not paying top dollar, right? Right. And pretty much by the end of the year, Bitcoin will ha have blasted through 20,000 again and probably on its way to 50,000, if not 100,000. That's, that's just simply a supply and demand idea. Now, what if it goes down to $1,000? Well, if it goes down to $1,000, we're probably all screwed uh, and the financial markets have probably fallen as well, and we all need to just start growing our own food and bartering with each other, right? I mean, this is a huge movement that is not going away, all right? So that's hopefully the answer to that question. And I would say get started today. It's a down day. Go to Coinbase, get Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash. You're going to be okay with any of those. They're all down they're all at a good price, but I think I would start with Bitcoin 
because Bitcoin is the oldest one. It's not going anywhere. It has problems, and you're not going to be able to use it in a store anytime soon, but that's okay. And at Coinbase, you can convert it instantly back into U.S. dollars if you need to, right? You don't. There's no lag, but if you need to start sending your Bitcoin anywhere, I would, I would recommend any of the other currencies, Bitcoin Cash, is much easier to send, much cheaper to send. Uh, and that's what I'm using if I need to move anything around. But I still think Bitcoin itself is not going away. So start there, you know, like maybe today, uh, yesterday about 100 bucks worth of Bitcoin. Maybe my next buy will be 100 bucks worth of Ethereum. And then maybe I'll buy 100 bucks worth of Litecoin. And then another 100 bucks worth of Bitcoin Cash as, as soon as I can afford it. Um, so, all right, so let's go back to your questions. Um, I see you checking in on a whole bunch of currencies, but can you recommend three if one was to try to keep it simple and invest in only three at most? And I would I would keep it to four. Um, Bitcoin, as I just said, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. Uh, and I don't think Bitcoin Cash is going anywhere. The, bo the bottom line is it works. They raised the, uh, the block size and... Uh, lower the transaction costs. I just sent a hundred bucks to my son. Uh, he bought me a hard drive, and I was like, "Do you want? Do you want fiat or do you want crypto?" I was like, oh, "Send me some crypto." So I sent him a hundred bucks worth of Bitcoin Cash. It cost one cent to send, and it got there pretty much immediately. You know, it, it took maybe a half hour to confirm. You know, all six confirmations or whatever. So um, those four, and you're going to be fine at Coinbase. When you're first starting out, you're not ready to trade, but you need to start buying on some some consistent basis, whether it's every day 20 bucks or every week 100 bucks or, you know, whatever you can afford. Now is a really good time to start buying, particularly if it continues to slip. Buy a little, buy a little, buy a little as it goes down. Uh, don't buy all, right? Don't go, oh, I have $10,000 to invest. I'm going to buy it today. No. Put a hundred bucks in, and then a hundred bucks in, and you know what I mean. That's all I'm saying. Uh, does one need to be sitting at the computer all day checking in and making trades by the hour to be successful at this? No, I think the people who do better are the hodlers, right? If you buy in when it's low and it goes on a run, you know, just hang on. What I've discovered is, uh. To do the same thing going up that you've done going down. As it goes back up, you take small amounts of profit out and reinvest it in something else that's really low. That's what I've done, and it's worked pretty well. What what didn't work is I wasn't ready for this uh, significant retracement, uh, and I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a war chest set aside of cash to start buying bargains. And that, that was the big shift in my consciousness this, that this has given me. Um, so uh, thanks in advance for any insight. You can offer these questions and peace and Rich. And thank you, Rich, so much for, for being willing to reach out and ask questions. P.S. Have you read any of James Altucher's stuff? He has some, he's some Wall Street investment wizard who has made millions, lost millions, and made more millions. As of sometime last year, he decided to become a cryptocurrency investment advisor. He says Bitcoin is no longer worth the investment, but there are others that are. He also says get in before February 2nd because something big is going to happen. He's also trying to sell a subscription to his newsletter, but with it, he gives for free a six-video masterclass, several books, bonus gifts. However, I know that much information I'll probably never study and digest, which is true. As it is, it's hard enough to keep up on everything I need to do just being a musician and sound medicine person. He's, he's kind of like me. I like that about him. Um, <clears throat> so here's the deal. There are three people that I recommend that you watch, and they're below every one of my videos. Let's see um, this last video I did. Let me just show it to you. I won't play it. I just want to get the, the thingy up here. Okay. And if you just go to my, my description... And scroll down. There are three guys who I would recommend that you guys check into. Ryan Lee of Crypto Grinders, Nicholas Merton at Data Dash, and uh, Crypto Investor. Those three guys are a really good group of teachers if you 
Ooh, I have to, I have to give myself a thumbs up. <laughs> uh, those guys are really good teachers, and they give away free every day better information than these these fuckers who are charging a lot of money for their courses. And the guys who are charging a lot of money for the courses are marketers who are realizing that, oh, this is the latest thing. Uh, that guy who advertises on YouTube, his name is escaping me. He shows up, you know, he's in his garage with his Lamborghini and all his books. <clears throat> that guy is now starting to give people advice about cryptos. And I have been doing this for a year. I've done it every freaking day. I've absorbed everything I can. I've thrown my my myself into it with deep abandon and I still barely feel like I know what I'm talking about. And the people you need to listen to are people who've been doing this a lot longer than somebody who was doing Wall Street and then switched, you know. Um, so please be wary of courses that people are charging for unless, for example, Ivan on Tech is teaching a course. That's a course worth taking because you're going to learn like what's going on technologically. That guy knows what the fuck he's talking about, right? Um, so that would be my advice, and I want to keep this short because it's it's a down day, and uh, the blood will stop flowing <laughs> eventually, uh, and we will have we will have some buyers coming in here because the prices are good. But we've had a bit of a slide. So you have to be aware that, you know, this is the time to buy. When it's red is buy time. Most new people buy here when it's all green and they're trying to get in because they don't want to miss it, right? Now is the best time to start dollar cost averaging. And Bitcoin has problems. <clears throat> and it's slow and it's expensive, but it's also the most secure and the largest and has the most history and it's the one that gets all of the attention it's kind of like the kardashians and sometimes i get pissed at bitcoin because i think what's all the fuss with a cryptocurrency that doesn't even work right and the fuss is that it is an idea it's a technology it's a software it is so many different things that you cannot listen to the mainstream media about bitcoin you just can't you have to discipline yourself to either look at it with a jaundiced eye or to ignore it altogether and to just take some very simple concepts and realize that this is deeply disruptive, it's quite threatening to the world's governments, and if you're going to invest in it, you want to invest in more than just Bitcoin, uh, and I would highly suggest pretty much the choices you have at Coinbase, great place to get started. Those are cryptos that are not going away anytime soon. They may be cheaper as the days go through here. Uh, you know, there's Chinese New Year coming up. This tends to be a slow time of year anyway. Blah, 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 blah. And there's been a lot of negative news. So use that. And, uh, and but for me, I'm just taking a step back because I'm realizing, you know what, I can't. I can't do anything about this. So I might as well work on some of the other stuff that I started trading cryptos in order to do, which is basically do my music, right? And my music music right now has already been disrupted by the internet, right? And making a living as a musician is pretty freaking impossible. However, making money in cryptos is still early and it's still good. And it's just like, I don't know, living in a jungle. There's stuff you have to learn. You don't just get airdropped into a jungle uh, and told, okay, you got to survive. You're going to make mistakes. And there's some dangers. There's some snakes that if they bit you, could kill you. There's maybe wild boars in the woods. You got to learn about that shit, no matter what ecology or environment you're in. And that's, it's no different with cryptos. There's things that you can hurt yourself with. But you can also get run over crossing the street or walking down the sidewalk, right? There's danger everywhere in your world, but you can't live afraid of the danger. You have to learn how to manage it and how to kind of surf it as best you can. So that's what the Morning Cryptos for me is all about, is every day sharing what I've learned, what I'm struggling with, 
what I didn't get, what I'm confused about, what pisses me off. Uh, and um, so I think that's it. That answered some of your questions, Rich, and hopefully some of you other folks who are somewhat new to the space. And again, this is not to be construed as financial advice. I am here just a little bit ahead of you guys learning right in front of you. And um, so that's it for today. This has been The Morning Cryptos. If for some strange reason you actually like this, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Hit that little subscribe button. Ring the bell thing so you get notifications. And I will see you tomorrow. And uh, hopefully we'll have an update. Hopefully the slide downward will stop. But in the meantime, every day that it goes down, get yourself a little something. Get yourself a little something, something. Get yourself a little something. And uh, maybe today I'll buy some Ethereum. Uh, and uh, maybe tomorrow I'll buy some Litecoin. And maybe the next day I'll buy some Bitcoin Cash at cheap, cheap prices. And uh, just hang in there, people. And remember, this is, this is a vast and complicated thing. It is global on its scale. And it ain't going away anytime soon. But it's also in for its share of heavy weather, you know. Sometimes there's a storm. Sometimes it's a beautiful sunny day. Right now it's a rainy, miserably cold, nasty day outside here in upstate New York. And uh, sometimes it's beautiful. Either way, we don't have a choice in what is, but it's our choice as to how to respond, how to react, and how to interpret and perceive what is going on in the markets and in our lives and to interpret it in a way that gives us power, gives us strength, gives us something valuable that we can use in the future. So that's it for now. Thanks. Thanks so much, everybody. I really appreciate you. Thanks for all your comments. Leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next one. Start the music. <laughs>